fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Sailor Sam is the smartest boy who ever shouted ship ahoy. He can weather any storm that blows. He's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Good old Cheerios. They got go. So nourishing because they're made from oats with minerals, vitamins, and proteins that your body needs. Yes, indeed. A bowl of Cheerios and milk really starts your day off right. Does all sorts of good things for your body. Helps you have strong bones and muscles, good red blood, and healthy nerves. So every morning, take on a bowl of Cheerios and milk for real go power. You like that wonderful toasted oat flavor, too. Downright delicious. Come to think of it, Cheerios is one of the tastiest muscle-building foods you can eat. Try Cheerios and you'll hear... He's feeling his Cheerios. With his faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. Are you Silver? Hooray! The Lone Ranger and Tonto camped for the night east of Boonton, Kansas, were unaware that the notorious Pete Daggett's outlaw gang was camped in the hills west of the town, preparing to stage a daring raid. The outlaws' camp faced the trail to Fort Manning, an eight hours' ride to the west. Daggett and his pals, Slim Randall and Reb Collins, sat apart from the seven other members of the gang. Slim was relating what he and Reb had learned on their visit to Boonton earlier that night. Pete, you got your information straight. Lieutenant Kingston and five privates from the fort are in Boonton with a wagon. All the people in town know they're going to pick up supplies when the train from Kansas City gets in tomorrow morning. <laughs> what they don't know, but what we do, is that those soldiers will be picking up a three-month Army payroll, too. Yeah, we like to tell the boys. Hey, boys. Yeah. Hey, what's on your mind? Tomorrow, everything goes as planned. We ambush the Army wagon, grab the money in it, and head south for the hideout. <laughs> The attack on the army train next morning caught the young soldiers by surprise. Two of them fell wounded before they could reach for their guns. The other three, afforded protection by the wagon, shot five of the crooks before they fell before the bullets of Pete Daggett and the remaining members of his gang. Daggett, Slim Randall, and Reb Collins, with two crooks called Hank and Rigger, searched among the crates inside the wagon. Pete Daggett himself found the large canvas bag which contained the money. Hey, boys, here it is, the army payroll. The tamus. Hey, Pete, what about our boys that got hit? What are we going to do with them? Leave them. Steady, boys. Get, get, get up, get up, get up. Get up. More than three hours passed. The Lone Ranger and Tonto, riding through the wooded hills that overlooked the trail to Fort Manning, reined their horses sharply at the sight they saw below. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, Tonto, that's an army wagon in the middle of the trail. Ah, and look another side of road. Men lying drowned. Those two soldiers walking around with the wagon are bandaged. Tonto, let's ride down there. Come on, Silver. Come up the path. Lieutenant Kingston, hello there. Well, what do you know? Hello. Lieutenant, you know these fellas? Yes. Lower your gun, Private Phillips. 
Gentlemen, get your hands down. Thanks. Just round, Toto. Easy, uh-huh. steady, big fella. <laughs> Philip, these men are friends of Colonel Holland. I met them at the fort last year. Lieutenant Kingston told of the ambush and payroll robbery. He explained that he had revived first and had treated his men and himself. Privates Phillips and Carroll, less seriously wounded than the other two soldiers, helped give first aid to the outlaws, who now lay on blankets at the side of the road. Kingston finished his story by saying, We emptied the wagon of supplies and put our men inside. We'll pick up the supplies another time. Will you do the same with the outlaws? Yes. But first, we'll tie them up. Lieutenant, one of the outlaws is coming, too. He's trying to talk. Ah, uh, thanks, Carroll. Let's go and see him. Right. Water. Give me water. Must have a look. Uh, that Curly Roberts. Water. Yes, I know it is. Lieutenant, I have my canteen here. I'll give him water. Water. I know. Who is Curly Roberts? Uh, him, plenty bad hombre. He belonged to Daggett Gang. We sent him to prison one time. Curly, here you are. Uh, I'll drink this slowly. Uh, uh, <coughs> oh, thanks. Thanks. Did you get him? Get whom? Pete Daggett. Those other coyotes. Did you hear that, Lieutenant? Uh, no, Curly, we didn't get uh, them because we didn't go after them. Well, that's too bad. Uh, Lieutenant, may I handle this? Curly, go right ahead. Curly, you seem disappointed that Daggett and your pals escaped. Oh, those skunks aren't pals. They left us here to die. Like, you're, you're the mess, man, with, with a white horse. You sent me to jail. I only helped to do that. Curly, do you want me to get Daggett? You? (coughs) Hey, hey, maybe you could. Yeah, you could. I intend to try, Curly. Where is Daggett heading? To the hideout. Down near Tremor. Tremor in the Indian Territory? Yeah, yeah. Curly, try to tell me. Who are the four men with Daggett? They're rib, rib columns. Rib columns, huh? I know him by sight. Who else? Slim Randall and... <coughs> him faint. Is he dead? No, Lieutenant. Just unconscious. We'll place him and his pals in the wagon and take them to the fort. Phillips, you drive the wagon. Yes, sir. I'll remain inside and keep a watch on our men and the prisoners. Carol? Yes, sir. Ride on to the fort ahead of us. Make a detailed report to Colonel Holland and tell him we have reason to believe that Daggett and his men have gone to a place somewhere near Tremor in Indian Territory. Yes, sir. Now, Lieutenant, please have Private Carroll tell the Colonel we'll try to locate Daggett's hideout before his soldiers get to Tremor. We'll try. I'm talking about Toto and me. Toto, please get our horses. Oh, get We're them. going after the Daggett gang. <laughs> During their flight southward through Indian territory, Pete Daggett and his outlaws rested but little. And so two nights later, they reached their hideout near the isolated town of Tremor. Slim Randall and Reb Collins rode into Tremor and entered Jim Kyber's Ace High Cafe for supplies. Minutes later, amid a grove of trees at the edge of Tremor's main street, the Lone Ranger and Toto reined their horses. Oh, 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 scout, oh, open, uh, any big scout. Scout. They had taken the revengeful Curly Roberts' word that Daggett and his gang would head for their hideout, and so the masked man and Indian had ridden directly to the outlaw town. When they dismounted, Toto said, Jim, Sally, we not what, catch up with outlaws on trail. You think maybe them here already? Probably. Well, we'll soon find out. But first, we must find hideout. Yes, and we can't waste time. I know we'll start by making a round of the cafes here. We may be able to pick up information about Daggett. You wear cowboy disguise? Yes, it's the simplest one. And I'll wear my pistols in gunslinger fashion. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question. And here's what the happy, happy people have to say. Eating our weedies and the doo-doo-doo and okay. Okay. That's the word up north. Just ask the champions. Up north, we know what weedies mean to guys like Slug and Harvey Keen. We love to see him belt that ball and make the fielders climb the wall. And Richie Ashburn, yes, indeed, he plays baseball at Wheaties' speed. Just watch him flash from base to base. This boy could win in any race. 
Yes, sir. Harvey Keene and Richie Ashburn are longtime Wheaties fans. Both of them know there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Wheaties, breakfast of champions. Keep on eating your Wheaties and you'll be do 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 and okay. 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 Now to continue. The disguised Lone Ranger and Tonto left their horses in the grove and went to visit the first of the cafes that dotted Tremor's main street. Finally, they passed through the doors that proclaimed Jim Kyber's Ace High Cafe. They stood inside the entrance a few moments and studied the men at the bar. Then they walked to a table near the side door and sat down. This is the toughest looking place we've been in so far. Ah, plenty bad hombres. Standard bar. Yes, they look like a living rogues gallery. But then Kyber always catered to bad men. I recall his place in Laredo. He ran one of the worst. Here, Here come waiter. He's not a waiter, Toto. This is Kyber himself. Let's get into character. So when the polecat reached for his gun, I drew mine, and before he could even. looking for somebody? Maybe I am looking for somebody. Why? I saw you come in a few minutes ago. I noticed the way you was wearing your gun belt. What's wrong with my belt? I can spot a gunslinger a mile off. Yeah, so can I. This place is full of them. Maybe. But I know who they are, and I know they're not gunning for anybody in here. Meaning that I am? Meaning I saw the way you and the redskin looked around when you come in. And you've been doing the same thing since you sat down. You're looking for somebody. I can see that. Suppose we are. Doesn't mean we're gunning for him. Well, you better not be in my place. What? Your place? <laughs> well, what do you know about that? So, uh, you're Jim Kyber, are you? Yeah, I'm Jim Kyber, and what's so funny? Nothing, partner. You're just the man I wanted to see, that's all. I, uh, want to locate Pete. I know a lot of Pete. Pete who? Daggett. Pete Daggett, huh? Do you know him? I've known Pete a long time. When he left Kansas a few days ago to come here, I said I'd come down here too. I may be able to get you some information. You stay right there now. Ah, you can go past. That's strange. Yes, Toto. He's suspicious for some reason. Or else, look, he's stopping at that table in the far corner. Ah, him talk to men with back turned to us. Me think him talk about us. See? Him nod head over this way. One of the men he's talking to is turning around. Toto, that's Slim Randall. Ah, and Kimosabe, you guess right. Daggett gang back in town already. Randall's getting up from his chair. So the man with him. Oh, this could mean trouble. Ah, and what we do, Kimosabe? Prepare for the trouble before it happens. See that open window near the front? Ah, let me see it. Slip out the side door quickly. Get to that window and cover me from the outside. Toto rose quickly and darted through the side doorway. A plan of action was forming in the Lone Ranger's mind as he remained seated adjusting his gun holsters for ready use. He watched Jim Kyber approach with Slim Randall and Reb Collins. The outlaw's eyes were centered on him. Their hands hung loosely near their guns. They stopped grim-lipped as they reached the table. And allowed Jim Kyber to do the talking. So you're a friend of Pete Daggett's, are you, stranger? No. Huh? Well, you told me... I told you I was looking for Daggett. I didn't mention the word, friend. Now, wait a second. You said you were in Kansas with him. I said we were in Kansas. I didn't say we were together. Jim, this is a real wise hombre. Maybe you better let me talk to him. Don't waste your breath, Slim. What? Uh, Slim! You said back there you never saw this fellow before, but he knows you. I know you too, mister. What? Reb Collins is the name, isn't it? Oh, doggone. Both of you helped Daggett ambush the army detail near Booton. Slim, how could he know that? You robbed the payroll and you left Curly Roberts and your pals to die. Slim, what's he talking about? You wouldn't know about it, Jim. And I can't figure how this hombre does either. Curly Roberts told me. What? He didn't die, Slim. I talked to him where you left him and the others. I promised Curly I'd get Daggett for what he did. Curly's pal, huh? 
Well, fella, your promise was all wet. Don't go for your gun. Mate. No, I'll blow you. Oh, oh, Please, hey. the three of you. Yeah. Move it, I'll blast all you. All right, don't shoot. Real fast, aren't you, strangers? Fast enough. Hey, shot the gun right out of my hand. The next time, I'll aim at you. Diver, tell your customers this is a personal affair. They better keep out of it. That's big talk. My Indian friend outside the window will back it by shooting the first man who tries to interfere. Kyber looked toward the window and saw Tonto with a gun ready for use. His manner changed. Slim, he said, somebody's your problem. Get him out of here. Yeah, but how I... I'm leaving, Slim. Now that I know Daggett's back in town, I'll go and get him and the money. Oh, you hear that, Slim? He's going after the money. I'm leaving. Hello, cover me. Uh, do it. Don't try to leave here until five minutes after I've gone. If you do, you'll see... As the three bad men watched in ill-concealed fury, the disguised Lone Ranger withdrew through the side door of the cafe. After a few seconds, Slim Randall started to move, but Tonto, still outside the window, sent a shot close to his head. Slim, don't try to find out if that engine can come closer. Stay here like that fella said. Minutes passed before the outlaws moved and ran into the street. There was no one in sight. Get up, get up, get up. up. The outlaws mounted and sped through the main street to the edge of town, then veered from the road and started along a narrow path that led past a grove of trees. When they had covered less than a hundred yards, a masked man and Indian rode slowly from the grove. Who do we go? They go for the hideout, Tonto, just as I thought they would. Let's follow them. Come on, Tilbury. At the hideout, outlaws Hank and Rigger had gone to sleep after Slim Randall and Reb Collins left for Tremor. Pete Daggett had pretended to sleep, too. Like the others, he lay wrapped in a blanket on the floor. A few hours passed before deep snores assured Daggett that Hank and Rigger were sound asleep. Then he arose, lighted a lantern, and removed the canvas money bag from its hiding place in the closet. Moving quietly, he took the bag and started to tiptoe toward the door. And at that moment, the door burst open, revealing an excited Slim Randall and Red Collins. Hey, Pete, he didn't get here yet, did he? He was... Uh, who? The gunslinger. Red. Uh, hold it. Why? Pete, that's the money bag you've got there. Hey, what's going on? Shut up, Hank. Pete, you were leaving with a money bag. Hey, Rigger. Rigger, wake up. Uh, Wait, what's the matter with you? You crazy? I was just taking this bag hey, to... what are you guys up to? Oh, dress ready to leave, eh? Hey, Pete, you had the money bag. Rigger! Uh, Rigger! Hey, what? What's happened? Hey, Rigger. Uh, well, we were sleeping. These three got together to double crosses. Huh? Look at them, sneaking out with the money. Hank, you're loco. Slim and I just come in. That's right, Hank. Stop pointing your gun. You too, Rigger. Now put away your gun and listen to it. No, I can see what's happened too. Hank, I'm with you. Yeah, sure you are, Rigger. We're not going to end up like Curly and the rest. All right, Pete, drop that bag. Sure. Sure, I'll drop it. Oh, hey, Daggett dropped the bag, sidestepped quickly, reaching for his gun as he grabbed Reb hey. Collins and held him as a shield. Hey, Pete, what are you doing? Oh. At the same moment, Hank fired, but the bullet hit Collins instead of Pete Daggett. As Collins fell, Daggett's pistol blazed. Oh. He emptied his pistol and Hank and Rigger fell. Then Daggett turned on Slim Randall, who stood transfixed by the sudden unbelievable turn in events. Slim, what's the matter? Are you too yellow to draw? Oh, Pete, don't shoot. I came here. Yeah, 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 you came here to die. The way it should be. I'll have all the money now. I don't think you will, Daggett. What the? A mask man. Why, you. Oh, no. Oh, you used all your bullets, did you, Daggett? Randall, you not move. Raise hands. Yeah, all right, engineer. Mask man, what are you going to do? I'll not use my gun because you're empty handed. No, I'm not. I'll get you. Try a draw sleeve knife, will you? Well, suppose you try a fist instead, like this. And this. And this. I dropped the knife. Stop. Stop. You're killing me. Oh, dang it. A rope will do that. But this will hold you for a while. Oh. All right, fellow. I'll try this, fellow. You take care of Randall. Uh-huh. Randall, you turn around. Uh, sure. Go ahead. Tie me up. I'm going to be glad to get out of this thing alive. Hank Rigger and Reb Collins were dead. They needed no attention. But as the masked man and Indian bound Daggett and Randall, the Lone Ranger said, To keep them all here in this hideout, soldiers from Fort Manning should have started out about eight hours after we did. They should arrive sometime tomorrow. Go down the road outside Traymore and keep an eye out for them, Tonto. It was late afternoon on the following day when Tonto met the detachment of soldiers heading toward Traymor and revealed the surprising news of Daggett's capture and the recovery of the army payroll. Colonel Holland, jubilant at the news, gave orders for his men to follow him. And there are the bills, Colonel. 
payroll. The entire payroll is there. I can't believe this. We have the Daggett gang. All of them. And Slim Randall gave us the name of the man who told Daggett about the payroll. I'll see that he's arrested when we get back to Kansas. And most important, sir, is the capture of Daggett. The survivors of his gang are ready to testify against him. Colonel, if the Army wants to rid Indian territory of its worst elements, it'll send men to clean out the town of Tremor. Believe me, that's going to be done. Good. We'll leave the rest to you, sir. Come on, Toto. Uh, Adios, sir. Adios. Adios. But wait, I'd like to thank you. Our but... lieutenant, he doesn't want our thing. Let him go. We'll meet him again if things get bad. You'll see. Why, how can you be sure of that, Colonel? Because, Lieutenant, I've been in the West long enough to know that when you're in great trouble, you can always depend on the Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Boyd. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.